The sixth principle is organized planning. You have decided on your desire, your goal. Now let's organize the plan for its accomplishment right on schedule. Let me quote again from Think and Grow Rich. You have learned that everything man creates or acquires begins in the form of desire. The desire is taken on the first lap of its journey from the abstract to the concrete in the workshop of the imagination where plans for its transition are created and organized. Earlier you were instructed to take six definite practical steps as your first move in translating the desire for whatever you want into its physical equivalent. One of these steps is the formation of a definite practical plan or plans through which this transformation may be made. 1. Ally yourself with one or more persons, a group of as many people as you may need for the creation and carrying out of your plan or plans for the accumulation of the money you've established as your goal. Making use of the mastermind principle. This is important. 2. Before forming your mastermind alliance, decide what advantages and benefits you may offer the individual members of your group in return for their cooperation. No one will work indefinitely without some form of compensation, although this may not always be in the form of money. 3. Arrange to meet with the members of your mastermind group at least twice a week, and more often if possible, until you have jointly perfected the necessary plan or plans for the accomplishment of your goal. Four. Maintain perfect harmony between yourself and every member of your mastermind group. Keep in mind these facts. First, you're engaged in an undertaking of major importance to you. To be sure of success, you must have plans which are faultless. Second, you must have the advantage of the experience, education, native ability and imagination of other minds. This is in harmony with the methods followed by every person who has risen above the average. Work at this until you have a well-executed, formal plan for reaching your objective. In this way, you're never confused or wondering what you should do next. Every morning you know exactly what you're going to do and why. It is in this chapter of Think and Grow Rich that Napoleon Hill gives us his 11 qualities of leadership. 1. Unwavering courage. 2. Self-control. 3. A keen sense of justice. 4. Definiteness of decision. 5 definiteness of plans, 6, the habit of doing more than paid for, 7, a pleasing personality, 8, sympathy and understanding, 9, mastery of detail, 10, willingness to assume full responsibility, and 11, cooperation. The chapter on organized planning is one of the largest and most important in the book. It goes without saying that a man without a plan to follow is like a ship without a course, no place to go with disaster a probability. The seventh principle, decision. The mastery of procrastination. To quote, accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list of the 30 major causes of failure. This is no mere statement of a theory, it is a fact. Procrastination, the opposite of decision, is a common enemy which every man must conquer. Analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing these decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who fail to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and of changing these decisions quickly and often. A definite objective makes reaching prompt decisions that much easier. Napoleon Hill gives many examples, one of which is the case of Henry Ford. One of Henry Ford's most outstanding qualities was his habit of reaching decisions quickly and definitely and changing them slowly. This quality was so pronounced in the late Mr. Ford that it earned for him the reputation of being obstinate. It was this quality which prompted Mr. Ford to continue to manufacture his famous Model T, the world's ugliest, but for the time, most practical car, when all of his advisors and many of the purchasers of the car were urging him to change it. Perhaps he delayed too long in making the change, but the other side of the story is that his firmness of decision yielded a huge fortune before the change in model became necessary, and the company is certainly none the worse for it today. When you make up your mind, stay with it. The majority of people who fail to make the grade are generally easily influenced by the opinions of others, easily swayed. They permit the newspapers and the gossiping neighbors to do their thinking for them. Opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth. Keep your own counsel when you begin to put into practice the principles we're describing here. By reaching your own decisions and following them, 
take no one into your confidence except the members of your mastermind group. And be very careful in your selection of this group, that you choose only those who will be in complete sympathy and harmony with your purpose. Close friends and relatives, while not meaning to do so, often handicap one through opinions and sometimes through ridicule. Thousands of men and women carry inferiority complexes with them all through life because some well-meaning but ignorant person destroyed their confidence through opinions or ridicule. If a decision is worth anything at all, it's worth sticking to until it's been completely worked. The eighth principle, persistence. Napoleon Hill defines persistence as the power of will. Willpower and desire, when properly combined, make an irresistible pair. Persistence to an individual is what carbon is to steel. In uncounted thousands of cases, persistence has stood as the difference between success and failure. It is this quality more than any other that keeps the majority from great accomplishment. They'll try a thing, but as soon as the going gets tough, they fold. Experience with thousands of people has proved that lack of persistence is a weakness common to the majority of men. It is a weakness which may be overcome by effort. If you are to accomplish the desire you set for yourself, you must form the habit of persistence. Things will get dark. It will seem as though there's no longer any reason to continue. Everything in you will tell you to give up, to quit trying. And it's right here that the men are separated from the boys. It's right here that if you'll go that extra mile and keep going, that the skies will clear and you'll begin to see the first signs of the abundance that is to be yours because you had the courage to persist. With persistence will come success. Persistence is a state of mind, therefore it can be cultivated. Like all states of mind, persistence is based upon definite causes, among them these. One, definiteness of purpose, knowing what you want. Two, desire. Three, self-reliance. Four, definiteness of plans. Five, accurate knowledge, knowing that your plan is sound. Six, cooperation. Sympathy, understanding, and harmonious cooperation with others tend to develop persistence. Seven, willpower. Eight, habit. Persistence is the direct result of habit. The ninth principle, power of the mastermind. It is in this section that Napoleon Hill describes the importance of forming a group of individuals sympathetic to your desire. They may be individuals with similar plans. A mastermind group can be made up of two or more individuals. No two minds ever come together without thereby creating a third, a third invisible, intangible force, which may be likened to a third mind. You may have noticed many times that by discussing something with another individual, you suddenly get good ideas as a result of this association. Ideas you would not have gotten without this association. The same thing happens to the other person.